Lord is said. Good evening, everybody. God bless everyone today. God bless me. I said, God bless me. He will bless you in Jesus' name. And I pray that the word of God will keep on enriching our lives, enlightening us, empowering us. And this work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for our leaders. Thank you for the choice of their lives. Thank you for the ministry you are putting in their hands and our hands together. We're asking, Lord, that this work will prosper in every one of our hands in Jesus' name. We will not be tired. We will not be weary. Nothing will turn us back. We'll keep on making progress on the field in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, we'll do the work the way you want us to do it. And many souls will get into the kingdom. Remain in the kingdom. On the final day when the trumpet shall sound, ourselves and themselves will meet at the feet of the Lord. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at um, Exodus chapter 12. In Exodus chapter 12, we're reading some verses here. I'm starting from verse 12. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast of the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. You'll see in that uh, verse 14. It talks about this day. It was a day like no other day in decades or in centuries. A day to be remembered. A day never to be forgotten. It was a long-awaited day. It was a predicted day. It was a prophetic day. It was an historic day. It was a most celebrated day. The question is, do you remember such a day in your life? For them and for us, it was the day of redemption. It was the day of salvation. It was the day of atonement, a day of adoption into the family of God. It was a day of new creation, a day of heavenly citizenship, a day of a new beginning, the day their names were written in the book of God, book of life in heaven. The question is, do you remember such a day in your life? A day that you remember, I came into the kingdom, a day that you remember, I was adopted into the family of God. A day that you remember that something happened within and something happened above. We're looking at chapter 12, verse 17. That is Exodus chapter 12, verse 17. And you shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread. For in this same day, you see the emphasis of the Lord, the self same day, have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, shall ye observe, tell me, this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. You see the emphasis of the Lord about this day, very significant. Chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 3. Chapter 13, verse 3, And Moses said unto the people, Remember, tell me, this day, in the which he came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand 
the Lord brought you out from this place, there shall no leavened bread be eaten. Welcome to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we're looking at verse 20. It says, but the Lord has taken you. You see the significance of the day. It's not just these people who are just creatures of God. Now they were redeemed and they were called unto the Lord. And the Lord has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are. Tell me now. This day, this day, it says it happened on a particular day. It happened at a particular time. He brought you unto himself. And now he says, you are my possession. Chapter 26 of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 26, reading from verse 17. 26, 17. Thou has avouched the Lord this day to be thy God. A relationship had been formed. And here we find themselves saying, we've decided, we came out of Egypt, we came to the Lord, we're now the possession of the Lord. And it is to walk in his way, and to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and hearkened unto his voice. Verse 18, and the Lord has about thee, tell me, this day to be his peculiar people. You have chosen him, he has chosen you. You have decided for him, he has also decided that he possesses you. And he says, you are now his peculiar people, as he has promised thee, that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. And then we're looking at Exodus chapter 32. Actually, as you look at Exodus chapter 32, and we'll read from verse 32 to verse 33, it tells you something that had happened earlier than at this time. Exodus chapter 32. We're reading from verse 32. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee out of the book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, tell me the rest, him will I blot out of my book. The point is this. When they became the people of God, God opened a special book in heaven for them. And he wrote their names one by one. Wrote the name of Moses and wrote the names of all the other people. They are mine. They are my children. They are members of my family. They are not like the Egyptians. I brought them out. I brought them in. And from generation to generation, they will be mine. And when they finish their race here on earth, I'm going to take them up into the heavenly place. That's why he wrote their names down. Again, the question is, do you remember such a day in your life when your sins were turned for? When you were adopted into the family of God? When you became a new creature in Christ? When the Spirit bore witness in your heart? You're a child of God and your name was written in the book of life in heaven. We're coming to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 20. Here Christ tells us the same thing that happened to them also happened to those who turned away from their sins and they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 10 verse 20. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because rejoice because rejoice because your names are written in heaven one clear fact is this that those disciples of christ this was the 70 that is sent out it says their names were written in heaven even before jesus went to the cross why not the names of those israelites were reaching the book of life in heaven even before christ came because they believed in the lamb of god they believed that god had said when i see the blood i will pass over you they applied the blood they stayed in their houses and then they had confidence in the Lord what he has said he will fulfill he wrote their names down 
they were saved. Thank God I'm saved. I said, thank God I'm saved. We're looking at chapter 19 of Luke. Luke chapter 19. We're reading from verse 9. Luke chapter 19, verse 9. It says in verse 9, And Jesus said unto him, Tell me, this day, this day salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. Second Kings, Second Corinthians rather, Second Corinthians chapter 6, Second Corinthians chapter 6, we're reading from verse 2, for he says, I have had thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. There must be such a day in your life that you know that it was a crossing line. It was a day of decision. It was a day of redemption. It was a day of salvation. It was a day when you came into the kingdom and the Lord avouched you accepted you that you are now his child and your name entered into the book of life again the question comes to you do you remember such a day in your life where when what how who and why what when where how, who, and why? Where did it take place? Can you remember in your mind's eye? Can you see your posture in your mind's eye that this is where it took place? Every one of those children of Israel, do you remember the house where they were in Egypt? Do you remember that very night when they applied the blood? Do you remember their posture, how they were, when it happened? Now the question comes to you, where did it happen to you? When? When did it happen to you? In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in your house, or when at the retreat, or when in a crusade, or when in a church service, that you can tell, I can take you to the place. I can tell you the time when that happened unto me. And the Spirit of God bore witness in my heart that I was a child of God. Where? When, what, what did you hear? What message did you understand? What did you do about the message? And what did you carry out in response to that message? And what can you remember now? The feeling and the change and the joy and the transformation that came to your life. What can you remember of the things that just went out of your life that was shed away from your life when that happened? How? How did you comport yourself after the children of Israel when God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And then in the morning, that is the following morning, they were hearing the cries, every other place, somebody died there, firstborn died there, firstborn died there, and they looked at themselves, they were saved, they were redeemed, they were covered, they were protected. How do you think they felt? How do you think they showed their joy? What feeling did they have inside them? When it happened to you, if it happened, how was your feeling? How did you feel light? As if your world has changed. Everything has changed about you. Who? Who else knew? about the change in your life. All those Egyptians were coming and were coming to their neighbors who were Israelites living in the land of Goshen. We just came to see what happened with you. Nothing. Nobody died here. As all the other people were crying, they were rejoicing. Who else knew about your salvation? About your change of life? Who can you point to? That fellow knew, that fellow knew, and he looked at you as if now you're mysterious, as if you are now like an angel that dropped from heaven. What happened thereafter? After those children of Israel were saved, they were redeemed, they were liberated, they didn't remain in that same Egypt, in that same house, 
they knew it was time to move. It would have been pointless and useless if they said they were saved and they remained in the same place. You know, there are people, they are telling us they are saved and they remain in the same old religion. They are telling us they are saved and they remain in the same old synagogue. They are telling us they are saved and they remain in the same Ramchako shrine where they have always been. They tell us they are saved and are still bowing down to the image of, you know, what Ever. But you know, those people, they were saved and they came out of the place because there was something that happens thereafter. After you are saved, after you are born again, they left. But the question is, why? Why did they leave all behind to go forth? Because their salvation, their redemption was not just that I feel better, I think better, I, I praise God, I'm happy over here. They knew they were coming out of a place to go to another place. And why did they leave everything behind to go forth to that land of promise, that land of Canaan? You must think about that in your life. The where and the when and the what and the how and the who else knew about it and why you have left all behind and now you are going on your way to the promised land. Thank God I'm going to the promised land. Somebody there said I'm going to the promised land. I pray you'll be there in Jesus name. Tonight we're looking at this message taking God's people to the promised land, taking God's people to the promised land. We're coming to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 37. Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 37. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 uh, men of foot that were men beside children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. Notice that. Underline that. Underscore that. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. And floods, flocks and herds, even very much cattle. We're looking at it from verse 40. Now, the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years even the self same day even the self same day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt all the hosts of the Lord nobody left behind you not be left behind all the host of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It's a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. Tonight, as I've said, we're talking on taking God's people to the promised land. But we're looking at something particularly tonight in verse 38. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. A mixed multitude went up also with them. Three points. Number one, the infiltration by a mixed multitude. They were going forth, they were leaving Egypt. Are going through the way in the wilderness and we're going to get to the land of Canaan and now the infiltration by a mixed multitude point number two the infection infection through a mingling membership the infection contagion the influence negative influence the infection through a mingling membership. Number three, the intervention of militant ministers. The intervention of militant ministers. Number one, tell me number one. Tell me like your preachers. The infiltration by a mixed multitude. 
Here is a serious sin now. That the children of Israel, children, boys, girls, their wives, their husbands, the fathers and the mothers, their leaders, their workers, everyone. They came out of the land of Egypt. And there were some people, they were Egyptians. There were some people, they were not Israelites. There were some people who had seen the great manifestation of the power of God in the land of Egypt concerning these children of Israel. And he said, it will be good to follow these people. It will be good to be with them and stay with them and go to the places they're going. We will not want to miss all the privileges and all the showers that will be coming out of heaven upon these people. Therefore, we're told in that Exodus chapter 12 and verse 38, it says, And a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. The Israelites went out of Egypt and were told in verse 37, 600,000 men, beside women, beside children, they were saved, they were forgiven, they had their names written in the book of life in heaven, they were redeemed, they loved the Lord, they feared the Lord, they claimed God to, to be their God, and God claimed them to be his own people. They, they were cleaving unto the Lord, they were made righteous, they had art transformed. But a mixed multitude went also with them. These people, these people, they were the people that saw the miracles in Egypt. They were the people that decided to go out of Egypt with the Israelites. But please understand, they came out, but no repentance. They came out, but no conversion. They came out, but no inward change. They came out, but no transformation in their hearts. They came out, but there was no renewal of their thoughts. Their thought pattern was still the same. They left Egypt, Egypt did not leave them. They left Egypt, but the mindset of Egypt, the principles of Egypt, and the inner thoughts of Egypt was still there with them. They were still Egyptians at heart. Yet, they came out and they brought Egypt along with them. What did they come out? What did they see? In Zechariah chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 23, Zechariah chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 23. Here it tells us about the attitude of some people, and this was the attitude of those uh, people that went out, the meek multitude. Look at this, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you. Repentance, don't think about that, we will go with you. Conversion, don't think about it, we'll go with you. A change of heart, a change of life, a change internally. We're not talking about that. We're saying that we will go with you for we have heard that God is with you. We see that we're getting healed. And we see that we're getting miracles. And we see that free manna is available for you. And we see that there's water flowing out of the rock for you. I like to drink part of that too. And we see the goodness of the Lord upon your life. We're seeing that God is with you. We will go with you. We must check up. Have they repented? We must check up. Have they been born again? We must check up. Do they have a real change in their lives? Look at these people that went out with the children of Israel. They ate the manna. They drank the water out of the rock. They passed through the Red Sea with them. They were protected by the pillar of fire and by the pillar of cloud. They were healed and they were also uh, provided for. And they heard all the law that Moses was reading to the children of Israel. They partook of special privileges, but there were still Egyptians at heart. 
they will steal Egyptians. I thought, are there many people like that? They have come and they have seen that the Lord is being good unto us. We pray and God answers our prayer. We pray and God performs miracles. And they say, that's my church. That's the place we're going to be. And a mixed multitude then comes sin. And then we're told about these people that they went out with the children of Israel. That's why instead of just crying out and shouting revival, revival, church planting and church growth, we want to find out these people that are coming and even the other people who have come in already are they born again are they children of god are they converted are they transformed or is this just a mixed multitude we're looking at proverbs chapter 30 proverbs chapter 30 and we're reading from verse 12 proverbs chapter 30 verse 12 there is a generation that appear in their own eyes and yet and yet and yet is not washed from their filthiness is not washed from their filthiness look at the rejoicing multitude and look at the mixed multitude who have come out with you their natures remain the same their names remain the same their attitude remain the same their habits remain the same their lifestyle remain the same their habits and their thoughts remain the same they were not washed from the egyptian filthiness they carried Egypt two of them Jeremiah chapter 6 Jeremiah chapter 6 we're looking at verse 10 Jeremiah chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 10 in Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 10 look at what is saying here to whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear behold their ear is uncircumcised their ear is uncircumcised they still like to hear the old music they were hearing and they still like to hear the old proverbs and profanity they were hearing everything they were they were hearing the language of egypt the culture of egypt the attitude of egypt and the worldliness of egypt and the festivities of egypt that's what they still wanted a mixed multitude they are not circumcised in their ears and it goes on to say and they cannot hurt him they cannot hurt him behold the word of the lord is to them a reproach they have no delight in it have you found the people that just, I just came to join the church while the message is going on there's no delight there's no interest in the word of God they don't like doctrine but they like prayer they don't like doctrine but they like miracles they don't like teaching the teaching of the word of god but they like faith they like miracles they like breakthrough they like supernatural wonders but when it comes to hearing the word of god the holiness without which no man shall see the lord uh -uh. they didn't come for that because it says they have no delight in the word of the lord look at verse 16 thus says the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path where is a good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls tell me what followed there tell me out loud tell me unison no they said no we didn't come for that we didn't come for that doctrine teaching we didn't come for that we came for water out of the rock we came for healing we came for deliverance the mixed multitude their hearts did not have any delight in the things of the lord and when the lord says stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path the path the narrow path that leads to heaven they said no we will not walk therein we're coming to second kings second kings chapter 17 in second kings chapter 17 we're reading from verse 28 second kings chapter 17 verse 28 it tells us then one of the priests whom they had carried away from samaria came and dwelt in bethel and taught them how they shall fear the lord and he taught them how they shall fear the lord look at verse 33 they feared the lord and served their own gods they feared the lord in their head doctrinally in their mind doctrinally but they had allegiance to their own gods they had affiliation to their own gods 
and they had commitment to their own goals. They're just part of the mixed multitude. And it says after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Look at verse 34. Unto this day, unto this day, they do after their, tell me, their former manners. They are, they're still Egyptians at heart. They're still Egyptians in culture. They're still Egyptians in tradition. They're still Egyptians in their lifestyle. They're still Egyptians. If nothing has changed at all. Only that they are part of a mixed multitude. And they came out to the people. No conversion. No repentance. No transformation. No new life. No new creation. And it says, neither the day after their statutes, after their ordinances, and after, uh, let, let me read that from verse 34 now it says in verse 34 to this day they do after their former manners they fear not the Lord neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the law and the commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob whom he named Israel they were in the midst of Israel, but it was so different. It was so different. Their language, very different. Their conversation, very different. The things they love, very different. The things they'll buy in the market, very different. Their taste, very different. Their delight, very different. And their, their future, very different. Everything about them, very different. They're part of the mixed multitude. And that's what the Lord is warning us is saying. It's not just a crowd. It's not just a crowd. We want to take people out of Egypt get Egypt out of them and get through the wilderness in good time and then get to the promised land and I pray you'll do that in Jesus name look at verse 40 verse 40 how be it they did not hack in they did not hack in they did not hack in they can attend Bible studies Sunday worship and revival meeting and you know house fellowship and everything but you know they just hear it goes through one ear and passes through the other ear it has no effect in their lives. They mix multitude. How be it they did not hurt him, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images. Both their children and their children's children, as did their father, so do they unto this day. You will not be like that. We will not be like that in Jesus' name. And then we come to Osea, Osea chapter, Osea chapter 8. These are the people, and you see their attitude when the word of God comes forth because they are part of the mixed multitude. And you should be checking up in your heart. Have you strayed away? Have you a kind of a sliding back to this condition in Osea chapter, Osea chapter 8 verse 12? Hosea chapter 8, are you there? Okay, if you are there, read it for me. Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. Look at that, look at that. The mixed multitude are reaching to them the great things of my law. The prophet is coming with great revelation and is coming with great declaration and is coming with the word from the very throne of God and the prophet is so excited. God has spoken to me and I want to speak to the people and he sat down and the people sat down and he listened to the prophet and he listened to the preacher. I'm reaching to them, I'm reaching to him. The great things of my law but they were counted as a strange thing that looks strange we're not talking about miracles today repentance that looks strange we're not talking about breakthrough today that looks strange we're talking about holiness today hmm. We're talking about heaven today. Hmm. We're talking about, remember Lord's wife today. What kind of thing is this? This one is strange. If it is getting water out of the rock, yes, give me some water to drink there. If it is getting, uh, you know, man out of heaven, everybody carry your cup, everybody, everybody carry your plate and go and gather. Wonderful today. And today, you know, we're going to defeat those Amalekites. No Amalekites will remain before you on the right hand side. You overcome them, left hand side 
that you overcome them they come one way against you you overcome them seven ways that's wonderful we are more than conquerors today and when but when it comes to sit down there will be no leaven inside your houses all these days in your generation clear out the levels up and live a pure life a righteous life a holy life we're getting ready to enter into the promised land it is strange today. It is hard today. It is tough today. I'm reaching to him the great things of my Lord. But they were counted as a strange thing. Look at verse 13. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of my offerings and eat it. But the Lord accepted them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins that they shall return to Egypt. Their mind is already there. Their mind was in Egypt. They didn't like anything of the real kingdom of God. Look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we're looking at it from verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 5. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5, uh, the Lord is still talking about these people. Now we're in the New Testament, but uh, they have not died out yet. The mixed multitude having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They join the people. They attend our worship. They associate with us. They affiliate with the church. They call themselves by the name of the church. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort a day which creep into houses and they lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse laws. Ever learning, they come. Ever learning, they are the Bible study. Ever learning, they are the Sunday worship. Ever learning, they listen to what we say. Ever learning and tell me. Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The truth of the printers does not play out in their lives. Of regeneration does not play out in their lives. And the truth of holiness does not, it's not in their lives. Because it says ever learning and never able to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres was chewed Moses, so do these also resist the truth. They resist the truth. They reject the truth. They refuse the truth. They pull away from the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Reprobate concerning the faith. I pray the Lord himself will deliver our congregations from the mixed multitude in Jesus' name. Look at Titus chapter 1 verse 16. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. They profess that they know God. We're part of you now. Are we, are we pagans? We're part of you now. Are we heathens? We're part of you now. Have we not come out of Egypt? We're part of you now. Are we not eating the same manner? Are we not drinking the same water that comes out of, the, out of the rock? They profess that they know God. Look at this. But in works, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work, reprobate. Unto every good work, reprobate and here the lord is telling us why we should make sure that the people that come in and the people that congregate with us associate with us the people that have genuine salvation and they have real real heart to serve the lord acts chapter 8 acts chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 9 acts chapter 8 reading from verse 9 but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is a great power of God and to him they had regard respect because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Verse 13, verse 13, tell me. 
Then Simon himself, then Simon himself, you know what? All the other people that were consulting him, they had left. I've gone to Jesus. I'm following Jesus now. I'm born again now. I don't need deception anymore. I don't need your cultic uh, tricks anymore now. We've gone to be with the Lord. And when he saw that he had lost the people, then Simon himself believed also. Think about that. And when uh, he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered and beholding uh, the miracles and the signs which were done. Eventually the apostles came from Jerusalem and they laid hands on the believers and they received the Holy Ghost but he did not receive any Holy Ghost because actually it was there in body, it was not there in spirit, it was there as part of the number but his nature had not been changed, look at verse 18, then Simon saw that through the laying of the hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them tell me money that's all he knew that's the important thing to him he offered them money that's the occultic money he had got from all the people before he offered them money saying give me also this power that on whomsoever i lay hands he may receive the holy ghost thank god for peter i say thank god for peter i say thank god for peter and i thank god for you are you there you have this attitude you'll have this spirit you'll have this discernment and you'll have this commitment to the truth in jesus name but peter in verse 20 said unto him thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of god may be purchased with money thou hast neither part nor lord in this matter You've been following Philip, thou hast neither Lord, part nor Lord in this matter. You profess you are born again. You have been baptized in water. You are just part of the mixed multitude. Thou hast neither part nor Lord in this matter. For thine heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray, he peradventure, he perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the God of bitterness. Was he saved? I said, was he saved? Thou art in the God of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity the lord deliver us from such as so-called members in jesus name point number two the infection through a mingling membership infection as the mixed multitude came in and then the infection that came the contagion that came we're coming to numbers chapter 11 numbers chapter 11 remember now the mixed multitude they came out of egypt with the children of israel and the problem started with them look at this numbers chapter 11 verse 4 and the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lost him and the children of israel also 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 wept again and said who shall give us flesh to eat the problem here is that the, um, the mixed multitude, these were the people that did so much harm to the children of Israel. And they meant so much evil to the children of Israel. The holy seed, the righteous nation, would have fared better without the mixed multitude. Many of the 600,000 men that came out of Egypt might have reached the land of Canaan. But no, they couldn't reach the land of Canaan. Only two, Joshua and Caleb, reached the land of Canaan. You know why? Most of the other 600,000 people were influenced by the attitude, by the murmuring, by the complaint, by the fighting, by the, all the you know, practices of the mixed multitude. The nation never recovered from the infiltration, from the infection, from the inventions, from the inflictions of the mixed multitude. And the question is, are you free as a person? Are you free as a man? Are you free as a woman? Are you free as a local church from the influence of the missed multitude? Are you free? as a family from the infection of a mixed multitude would you say that your congregation is free that your district is free 
that your group is free would you say that you are free in every way from the influence of the mixed multitude are we free as a whole church deeper life from the influence from the infection and from all the contagion of the mixed multitude are we pure in heart free in heart that our hearts has not been influenced but the attitude of the of the murmuring complaining mixed multitude are we free in our thoughts the egyptians that are among us the worldly people that are among us and then they come in and out and the journals in the house fellowship and the journals among the workers and the journals among the ministers and you can tell from their attitude you can tell from their disposition that the people that start murmuring that the people that start complaining and even you know uh, for three weeks now we've been talking about holiness we're going to talk about healing for about a month now everything is heaven 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 is heaven going to come now is jesus going to come today when are we going to talk about this and about that you know we're talking about you know so and so is sick and so and so has passed on to glory and so and so is uh, having this challenge and look at what they are talking about in all the other churches they are talking about you know merriment and uh, celebration and this and that and they are they are very very joyful and they are very happy but here we just sit down there there's no movement repentance restitution righteousness holiness without which no man shall see the lord when are we going to pass out of this one we're still in the class of holiness and this and this and that are we free in our congregations are we free in our groups are we free in our in our in our regions in faith is our faith pure or has the mixed multitude affected our faith our principles our practices our marriages our so-called ceremonies somebody has got a child somebody has got a car somebody went to school got certificate somebody got this and somebody got that are we free in our perception are we free about getting to heaven are we free about the great commission the sin he has committed into our hearts are we free in our priorities do we have a priority that is totally free from the influence of the mixed multitude in our pursuit in our holiness and then running after the things of heaven are we free or are we contaminated by a mixed multitude look at that passage again it tells us in numbers chapter 11 i'm reading from verse four numbers 11 verse 4 and the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lost him and then that influenced the children of israel and the children of israel also wept again and they said who shall give us flesh to it will remember the fish is uh, what the mixed multitude remembered first they were egyptians and they ate freely the the israelites did not eat all that freely because you know it was our lashes and all that behind their backs but now as the mixed multitude said we remember and they influenced the children of israel they said we remember too the fish which we did eat in egypt freely the cucumbers and the melon and the leeks and the onions and the garlics now but now our soul is dried away and there is nothing at all besides this manner before our eyes what a bad influence they had what a terrible influence they had we're looking at psalm 106 psalm 106 the infection through a mingling membership when our members mingle with this mixed multitude religious people but not righteous the people that came out of egypt but egypt is still inside them psalm 106 i'm reading from verse 13 psalm 106 verse 13 they soon forgot his works and they waited not for his counsel they soon forgot his work and they waited not for his counsel the mixed multitude and then the children of israel they had influenced one another and they had penetrated into one another the uh, mixed multitude coming out of egypt they had forgotten about the ten plagues that happened in egypt they had forgotten the first influence and the uh, first uh, appearance of those miracles they had forgotten and the children of israel too they forgot they soon forgot 
they soon forgot the works of God and they waited not for his counsel. Look at verse 14. But they lost it exceedingly in the wilderness and they tempted God in the desert. Look at verse 15. And he gave them their request but sent leanness unto their souls. They didn't mind that. We're eating. They didn't mind that. Rain is falling. When they didn't mind that. The water is coming out of the rock. They didn't mind that. Miracles, physical miracle, tangible miracle happening. Even though we're in our soul, even though they were backsliding, all that did not matter to them. Holiness had evaporated. That did not matter to them. Conviction had evaporated. That did not matter to them. All they wanted is that, you know, the bread and the garlics and the onions and everything. And if you can give us that, we're satisfied. I pray that physical things alone will not satisfy you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. They forgot God their Savior. They forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt. Look at verse 24. Ye, they despised, tell me, tell me verse 24. They despised what? The pleasant land, eh, Canaan, Canaan, heaven, heaven. And the streets of gold. Is that what we are waiting for? I'm saying that, you know, we need a car now. I'm saying that we need money now. I'm saying that we need jobs now. I'm saying we need marriage now. I'm saying we need children now. And they're talking about holiness. They're talking about heaven. They're talking about a good place by and by. Paradise and heaven. And where you will be there all the time serving the Lord. And then no more tears and no more sorrow. Do something about the tears now. Do something about the challenges we have now. They had forgotten about the reason why we came out. We came out of the world. We came out of Egypt. And we're going to the land of Canaan. They had forgotten that. It says they despised the pleasant land. And they believed not his word. Tell me verse 25. Tell me out loud verse 25. They murmured in their tents. Uh, have you listened? You know, you sit down after the Sunday service. You finish the Sunday service about 11, 11 30. From 11 30 to 5 30 or 4 30, whenever, before you go for revival, you are listening to stories. You are settling quarrels. This one is fighting this one. This one is calling the word this one. This one greeted me. This one did not greet me. This one looked at me in a way I didn't like. This one said something I overheard. And that's what you are. That's what we're wasting our lives on now. And the evangelism, that's not important. And I'm saying that, you know, we don't have uh, money to pay house rent. We don't have money to cultivate this one. We don't have money to pay that one now. And they are not, uh, they, there's no love in the church now. They are not looking at our condition, murmuring and complaining. And we just sit down like that. We've forgotten sanctification. We've forgotten holiness. And we've forgotten pure heart. And we've forgotten our intention to want to get to heaven. We've forgotten the glory glory land. We have forgotten the pleasant land. The mixed multitude they have influenced us. And they have influenced us to the point that now complaint is coming everywhere. Mommy, murmuring is coming uh, coming from everywhere. And it says they hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. I pray things will change. Uh, look at verse 29. Verse 29 it says and they provoked him to anger with their, tell me, inventions even there were some kinds of uh, you know uh, things we never had of before in the earlier years inventions inventions terrible terrible things that were now here you know you uh, i can pastor i counsel somebody today and i'm surprised i'm shocked as to what they're saying you know something between this person and this person business practice between this person and that person and the things i never thought of that will ever happen even in nominal church we're hearing about this and about that and it says about the inventions and the plague break in upon them look at verse 35 verse 35 they were mingled among the heathen and they learned their works they were mingled among the heathen and they learned their works. Look at verse 39. It says, Those were they defiled with their own works and went a warring with their own inventions. Uh, that is the thing we see today. And that is the mixed multitude. And I'm praying that everything will change. 
I said everything will change. The people they didn't deal with when they were coming in, and I was saying, now we a big crowd. We have six hundred thousand men. We have six hundred thousand wives of them, and we have their children, maybe two, three children to each family. They ran into millions of people, and then after that, a mixed multitude, and see the teeming crowd of that teeming crowd. How many are genuinely born again? Of that teeming crowd, how many are genuinely sanctified? Of that teeming crowd, how many are circumcised in their hearts? Of that teeming crowd, how many people have their focus and their mind on heaven and on the land of Canaan and they want to get there and nothing will turn them back? That's why we need ministers today that will rise up to the challenge that will say, This congregation before them will be pure. They'll be sanctified. There'll be people that have a mind. They're going to get to heaven and to that heaven where we'll go in Jesus' name. We're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. I'm reading from the second part of verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, the latter part of verse 18. But one sinner destroys much good. Let's read it together. But one sinner destroys much good. Say that aloud. Think about that. If one sinner destroys much, much, uh, much good, how about a mixed multitude? Thousands of them. Millions of them. How about a mixed multitude? About 20% of the people, mixed multitude. About 40% of the people, mixed multitude. If only one sinner destroys much good, how about the influence of the mixed multitude on the whole nation? Let me show you their effect. Let me show you the destructive thing that the mixed multitude brought to them. Just short chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4 and verse 6. Joshua chapter 5, verse 4. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people. Think about this. All the people. Think about that. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, 600,000, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. You see the effect of the mixed multitude? All the 600,000 died in the wilderness. Only Joshua and Caleb entered into the land of Canaan. Look at verse 6. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. 600,000 men. Only two, they obeyed not the voice of the Lord unto whom the Lord swear that he would not show them the land which the Lord swear unto their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. They perished in the wilderness. You will not perish in the wilderness. Our members will not perish in the wilderness. Our congregations will not perish in the wilderness. But we need to take care of the, of the mixed multitude, of the people that are just coming in. They are highly placed people. Don't talk about repentance. How are they going to be saved? They are, you know, respectable people. Don't talk about conversion. How are they going to get to heaven? And the people love our church. They love our church. Don't say anything that will jilt anybody. Don't say anything that will disturb anybody. Don't say anything that will decrease our number. Don't say anything that will make them look for another church. How are they going to get to heaven? What's the purpose? What's the goal? What are we looking for? Are we looking for a mixed multitude that will destroy the people that were sanctified before they came in? Are we looking for a mixed multitude that will destroy the people that were converted and the people that are going on the straight way that leads to eternity before they came in? We must teach the whole word of God so that the people will not perish. Our people will not perish. Our congregations will not perish. And we have to have the boldness to keep on emphasizing the truth, emphasizing the word and the will and the way of God and the way of salvation and the highway of holiness. In Osea chapter 8, Osea, let me back up to chapter 7. Osea chapter 7, Osea chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 8. Osea chapter 7, tell me the verse. 
Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake that is not turned. Strangers have devout his strength and he knew it not. Strangers, strangers to the grace of God, strangers to the teaching of the Bible, strangers to the holiness of the word of God, they came in, mixed multitude, they have devout his strength and he knew each not. We're coming to chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 3. Chapter 8, verse 3. Israel has cast off the sinner that is good. Israel has cast off the sinner that is good. Look up here for a moment. We're not the Israel of God. When last did you hear about repentance in your local church? Israel has cast off the good thing. When last did you hear very clear plain message on restitution in your local church. Israel has cast off the right sin. Israel has cast off the good sin, the sin that is good. When last did you hear about clear holiness message without any mixture with holiness, with uh, healing and deliverance and witches and wizards and deliverance and this and that? Clear plain, straightforward, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Israel has cast up the sin that is good. When last did you hear about one man, one wife? Whoever we are, whoever you are, that it is one man and one wife until death do us part. When last did you hear something very clear that you'll not be unequally yoked together with some believers, come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters says the Lord Almighty uh -uh. everything is now in the middle there's a middle ground it's neither white nor black it's gray it's neither sharp nor dull it's like you know it's acceptable to everybody it's neither straightforward nor pungent it has become something acceptable to everybody we have cast off the clean edge and the sharp edge of the gospel and it says Israel has cast off the sin that is good and the enemy shall pursue him the enemy shall pursue him well if you if you turn your minds around here in our earlier days when we held on to everything we believed and we still believe on paper but now we're not you know we're playing games with the truth but in those earlier days when you just say in Jesus name all those things will vanish away I said all those things will vanish away. You know, we were not, you know, people that will pray and bring Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name for hours, for night, night vigil, before a little mosquito will flee out. And before a little cockroach will get out, once we come, the fire of the Holy Ghost was upon us. And the fire of the Holy Ghost was around us. I don't know, did you read in the papers uh, recently, one of our members, he was uh, sick, he had about seven holes in the heart, and then he was uh, taken to India. And uh, in India, they said they couldn't handle the matter. And then he was taken to Australia. When he got to Australia, uh, the, you know, something happened. And then he passed on. That means he gave up. He died. And they packed him as a dead corpse, a body. And then they put him in the coffin and then flew him back to India. And when they got to India, they put him in the mortuary. Right there in the mortuary, the attendant of the mortuary saw that there was uh, something moving and making noise there and he was afraid he ran away and then they came in and they brought his coffin and corpse everything out and lo and behold the man was alive I said the man was alive and then they opened the coffin when they saw the coffin he opened his eyes and then they looked at him they took him back to the theater to examine him and all the holes the seven holes in the heart that killed him everything was totally closed all the diseases that were there before he died, all the diseases were gone, and he came out walking like a gentleman like you and like me. And then last uh, Sunday, you know, they had a Thanksgiving service in Deeper Life Bible Church there in Delta State, and they, all the, you know, the people came like that together, and when they saw it like this, they said, God is still alive. <laughs> 
You see, that's the way it used to happen. I'm just coming from, uh, you know, Abuja now. I want you, Nasrawa, I want you, uh, I want you, Niger, I want you, Kaduna, and I want you. Benue, then we finished uh, on Sunday, this last Sunday in, um, in Abuja. And there was uh, somebody that came there, one of our members, a lady. He had been sick, and when he was sick, uh, you know, eventually, that's before he even knew us, and then he died. When he died, the medical students saw they would perform experiments with him and so they caught the navel you know the navel they caught it out but after eight hours that uh, woman after eight hours came up back to life again you know god is raising the dead without anybody having to shout come out come out come out you're free in jesus name but when you woke up, and when she woke up, they now discover what are we going to do because the navel had been cut off. And so eventually they patched everything. And when she came back home, eventually she became converted. And when she became converted in deeper life, she was going to the sisters and opening her stomach, saying, Look at my navel, they've cut off my navel, and show this one, they've cut off. Oh, we're sorry about that, sorry about that, sorry about that. But thank God now you are saved. But thank God I went there last year, August and then we had a crusade and we said in Jesus name somebody shout Jesus name and then when she got back home she woke up in the morning the navel had come back there and God is still doing wonders and the same God was serving it would not allow the mixed multitude to pollute us the power will remain there and the authority will remain there and the fire of the Holy Ghost will be burning in your heart in Jesus name any cockroach that, that tries to come near you Holy Ghost fire will burn everything away and all those things that are crawling about in the body which body whose body are they going to crawl not on your body I said not on your body if we will not allow the mixed multitude if we come back to the original deeper life original New Testament original power original preaching original ministry original and then all the mixed multitude in our midst they shape up or they run away if the fire is too much for them then they run away and then I ask the rest of the people in meaning will you also go away and then you say no to whom shall we go here where there is some diluted word of God we're going to stay and the diluted power of God will be working in your life and to get rid of this attitude of mixed multitude the influence of mixed multitude we need to come to point number three now the intervention of militant ministers you are the ministers for today you'll be a militant minister a militant apostle of the Lord, a militant worker, a militant preacher of the word of God, you will do it in Jesus' name. In First Kings chapter 18, First Kings chapter 18, and I'm reading from verse 21. First Kings chapter 18, and we're reading from verse 21. First Kings chapter 18, verse 21. It says in verse 21, Elijah came unto them, unto all the people, and said, How long, how long, how long? will he be between two opinions if the Lord be God follow him but he bail follow him and the people answered him not a word it's time to follow the Lord I said it's time to follow the Lord Ezra chapter 7 Ezra chapter 7 and we're reading here from verse 10 Ezra chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 10 Ezra chapter 7 we're reading from verse 10 it says in verse 10 for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments that's you there I said that's you there. You'll teach the word of God without fear, without favor, in Jesus' name. Second Chronicles chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 4. Second Chronicles chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 4. See what he said from verse 4. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim, and he brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. He brought them back. You are going back to your congregation. You are bringing them back to sound doctrine. 
you are bringing back to real Christian experiences. You are bringing them back to the power of God. You are bringing them back to the path that leads to the promised land. We are not going to be wishy-washy. We are not going to be dallying. We are not going to be, you know, here and there. We are going to go straight to the word of God. And they are coming back fully in Jesus' name. And then it tells us in the word of God in Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58, I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 58, we're reading here from verse 1. The Lord has commanded us and the word of God is very clear. What he wants of you and what he wants of me. For us to be very direct and very serious with the word of God. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Israel there, the house of Jacob, their sins. Show them the way of the Lord. Show them the word of the Lord. And let the word of God come through and come straight to the hearts of the people so that we'll come back to that same old religion. Old religion. We'll come back to that same old standard of the word of God. What are we going to do? Three things. Number one, preach the gospel. The whole gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Number two, pray unto God. Pray unto God. Number three, pursue the goal. Pursue the goal. Number one, preach. You preach purposefully that the people who are not saved will be saved and those who are backsliding will be restored and those who are compromising will stand firm with the courage of a saint, of a child of God. You preach purposefully. You preach pungently. Pungently. It is not like you are preaching and you yourself, you are sleeping on the pulpit. You are preaching and it is pungent. It is coming directly to the people. Preach penetratingly. That is, you preach the word and the word like a sword penetrates in the hearts of the people. You preach practically. It is not a vague preaching that does not have any practical tissue in it, any practical sin in it. Let it touch their lives. Let it touch their work. Let it touch their market. Let it touch all the things they're doing that they need to correct. You preach persuasively. You preach to the point that somebody will move out of that place and say, this is not right. I should not be here. I should not be here. If I want to serve the Lord, let me serve the Lord. You preach persuasively. You preach prayerfully. You are depending on the prayer. You are depending on the power of God. That the power of God will take the word and cleanse them. Will take the word and fire them up and take the word and renew their lives. You preach perseveringly. You will not be tired. You preach now. Everybody has not. A, everybody has not been combated, preach again. Everybody has not turned, preach again. Everybody has not responded, preach again. You preach purposefully. You preach pungently. You preach penetratingly. You preach practically. You preach persuasively. You preach prayerfully. You preach perseveringly. But then you pray. You pray. You pray unto God. You pray before you prepare the message. You pray while you are preparing the message. You pray before you preach. When you are coming, if you are going to preach on Sunday, you are going to preach on Thursday, you are going to preach any time, you will not not to be, you know, just uh, saying some other things and wasting time. You're, you're a man of prayer. You're saying, oh Lord, today I'm coming before you because of the people. And you pray for the people before you preach unto them. You pray for their perception that today they will understand the word of God. They will understand the demand of the Lord upon their lives. And you pray for their possessing of Christian experiences. Today I preach and those who are not saved must be saved. I preach and those who are saved will be sanctified. I preach and those who are sick will be healed. I preach and the word of God will penetrate the hearts of the people and they will turn from all their evil ways and then you pray for the power to obey. You pray for them that Lord, the word I'm going to speak today, the word that is coming to them today, the power, the grace, the strength, the divine spiritual energy that will make them to obey, you grant unto them. You pray so that 
that both preacher and the people will be doers of the word. That's why we pray. You pray and prayer goes along with the message and the prayer will turn the hearts of the people and will cleanse our churches from all the mixed multitude in Jesus' name. Number one, you preach. Number two, you pray. Number three, you pursue. You pursue the ministry. Pursue the ministry with your heart, with your mind, with your hearts, with your, you, with your eyes, with your focus on heaven. You have a goal and you are pursuing. And the thing you are pursuing is that the people I'm preaching to, they will get to heaven. You preach with your mind on God's glory. That's what I'm preaching today. I want God's glory to come out of this. You're preaching and you're preaching for, with the focus of the soul's salvation. The salvation of the people. The repentance of the people. The transformation of the people. The new creation in the people. You are preaching and your purpose is that you are pursuing the saints holiness. The saints holiness that those who have come to the kingdom of God that this ministry and this word and this preaching will bring holiness unto them. You are praying and pursuing Christ's satisfaction that Christ will be delighted when he sees the effect of the message on the hearts of the people when he sees the effect of my ministry on the people there will be satisfaction and delight in the mind in the heart of Christ. You're preaching what the purpose of, pers of pursuing the church's readiness for the rapture. That's your pursuit. You're pursuing the readiness of the church for the rapture. And then you have the pursuit of the final reward. The final reward. Look at Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own laws shall they heed to themselves, teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But Watch thou in all things. You will watch in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. The Lord will approve of your ministry. And the Lord will use your ministry to get souls saved. And to make the mixed multitude to become a mighty army of devoted, uncompromising people. Steadfast in the things of the Lord in Jesus' name. We are going to clean off the mixed multitude attitude and the posture and the tradition and the bad influence and the infection of a mixed multitude in every local church in Jesus name. This church is moving on. And thank God you are there. Thank God you are there. And the fire of God will burn your soul. The power of the Lord will walk in your life. And your ministry will carry the people of God out of Egypt straight to the promised land in Jesus' name. Rise up and commit yourself to the Lord in prayer. And say, Lord, here am I today. Here am I today. Here am I today. Uh, first of all, you check up in your own life the effect of mixed multitude. Yeah, the, the influence of mixed multitude and the infection of mixed multitude to be cleansed away from your heart. And then God will use you as a militant soldier of Christ, militant minister of Christ, that through you, mixed multitude, attitude, disposition will be cleansed away from the church.